Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session. Today we will go for Chemistry 2025 Major Paper Six Variant Two. Let's go. Question one: When heated magnesium reacts with steam to make magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas, this figure shows the apparatus a teacher used to react clean magnesium ribbon with steam and collect the hydrogen gas produced. Name the item of apparatus labeled A. So this is gas string. Next, suggest how the magnesium ribbon should be cleaned before use. This question always asks, we just drop it with sandpaper. Next, state the purpose of the mineral wool. We know that we need to have water. If we do not put the mineral wool, water will flowing around. So that's why we need mineral wool to hold the water. Draw two arrows to show the two places where the apparatus should be heated. So we need to heat the magnesium ribbon first, and then we need to heat so that the water can evaporate, so it can pass through the heated magnesium and help reaction. E, during a reaction, a colorless liquid collect at point X. Identify the liquid here. For this reaction, they only can form magnesium dioxide and also hydrogen gas. So what else is the liquid that will form? It's only H2O because here when we heat, the water will evaporate, but this region, they are cooler. So that's why water can condense here and form H2O at this corner. F, the gas collected in A is not pure hydrogen. Suggest why the gas collected is not pure. It's always because it contains air. Because when we fit in this apparatus, initially it contains some of the air, so that's why it cannot get a very, very pure hydrogen gas. Question two. A student investigate the temperature change when anhydrous lithium chloride dissolves in water. They use five experiments. Experiment one, they use measuring cylinder to pour 40 cm cube of DC water into beaker. From here, we already know they say they use measuring cylinder, which is not very accurate. Usually, if you use burette, it would be more accurate. Next, they say they use a thermometer to measure the initial temperature. Add 2 grams of anhydrous lithium chloride. Continuous stir the mixture by using a thermometer. Measure the highest temperature. Then they repeat the experiment with 30 cm cube of distilled water, 25, 20, 15. The thing that they don't change is 2 grams of lithium chloride. The thing that they change is the volume of water. And then they keep investigating and record what is the highest temperature that it can you form, that it can form. All of the mass of anhydrous lithium chloride is 2.0. And make sure all accuracy is 0 0.0. If you just write 2, then we'll minus mark because of the accuracy. Next, we need to record the highest temperature reach from the photos that I give. Here is 27. But we check back here, it's one decimal place, so make sure you write 27.0. And then the temperature change, just use this minus this will be 4.5. 29, 6.5. Here, not yet 31, so it's 30.5. 8.0. 32.5. 32.5. 32.5. Thirteen point five. So the table write it correctly and accuracy for max. Part B. Complete a suitable scale on y-axis to plot your results from here. So we know the temperature change maximum is thirteen point five. We need to fully utilize the scale two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 40. So it's just nice. It can cover 30 more 5. So we will use this. Then when the volume is 40, the changes is 4.5. When it's 30, it is 6.5. 25, 8. 20, 10.5. 15, 13.5. Then draw a line of space 3. Next question, extrapolate the line on your graph to deduce the temperature change when experiment 1 is repeated with 45 cm cube of water instead of 40. So from here, we know it is 4.2 degrees C. And you must show 
your working by drawing the lines. So as long as you show like this and your graph is smooth, then they will accept any value that you correctly shown from your smooth curve graph. Party energy given by two gram of anhydrous lithium chloride dissolved is calculated using the formula below. Ask you to form find when two gram of anhydrous lithium chloride dissolved in experiment five. So the temperature change and volume of water we check back. Volume is fifteen. Temperature change is thirteen point five. Get eight fifty point five. E, estimate the temperature change when temperature 1 is repeat using 4 gram of lithium chloride instead of 2 gram. So we will estimate it is double because the number of anhydrous lithium chloride is double. Double the mole, double the heat release. Experiment 1 initially increased by 4.5 degrees C. So double of it will be 9.0 degrees C. The reason is because... twice mass of lithium chloride, twice energy given out. Explain why the result obtained would be more accurate if the beaker used in each of the experiment is replaced by a polystyrene car. It's always because polystyrene is an insulator, so it will reduce the heat loss to surrounding. G, explain why using burette instead of meshing cylinder is an improvement. We always talk about this because it increases accuracy. Explain why standing a beaker in a water bath is not an improvement. Water bath is to make sure temperature remains constant. But here, we need to measure the changes in temperature. So impossible, we let temperature as constant. Question three, a student has two solids, which is J and K. J is a iron to iodide. The student dissolves solid J in water to form solution J and divide into four portions and do four different tests. Part A, to the first portion, the student adds aqueous NaOH dropwise and excess. So we refer back to the NaOH plus. Testing for iron 2, they say it forms green precipitate insoluble in excess. Okay, so we just write our observation based on this. When it's dropwise, it forms green precipitate. Just copy the correct one. And then when add in excess, they say it's insoluble. As long as you copy the info correctly, then all the answers are already in the table. Part B. To the second portion of J, the student add 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid, followed by barium nitrate. When you see barium, confirm it's testing of sulfite ion. This is iodide. This do not have sulfite. So that's why no reaction will happen. So you just write no change. C. To the third portion of J, the student add Dilute nitric acid with few drops of silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is for the testing of group 7. And here we have iodide. So if we test with silver nitrate, you will form yellow precipitate. Make sure you know PPT means precipitate. D, to the fourth portion of solution J, they add aqueous chloride. Okay, so this is the only information that do not provide you from the table at the back. They are testing you whether you know the displacement. They're using the idea of group 7. Chlorine is more reactive, so chlorine prefer to become chloride ion. So they will have displacement happen, so iodide will change back to iodine. Brown solution will form. Color for iodine, for chlorine is yellow, for bromine is orange. To test on solid K, table 3.1 shows the test for the observation of solid K. From the table, test 1 says carry out flame test on K and lilac color flame. So potassium is there. And then test 2, they say the remaining K solution dissolved in water to form solution K. The first portion in boiling tube, at NaOH, and then warm the product and hold damp red litmus paper. Damp red litmus paper is to test alkaline whether ammonium gas is formed. 
And then they say the red limus paper remain red, means that no ammonium is released, means that it's not ammonium ion. Test three, second portion of solution K, add sodium hydroxide and a piece of aluminium foil. So when they add aluminium foil, means that they are testing nitrite ion. Warm and test any gas given. They say aphorosin is C and then damn red litmus paper turns blue means ammonium is produced. So we can confirm nitrate is there. So from here, we already confirmed this is potassium nitrate. Then we can see the question. State the conclusion about K that can be made from the observation in test 2. So we know test 2 is to test the presence of ammonium ion. So you just say not ammonium ion. Make sure you write Ammonium ion follow back here. Identify the gas given in test three. Obviously, it is ammonia gas because it will turn the red limus paper blue. Identify solid K. We already confirmed we have potassium in test one and we confirm nitrate ion here. So that's why you just write potassium nitrate. You just follow what they write here. Then you gain all these marks. Question four, plan experiment. Magnesium sulfide is a salt which is soluble in water. The solubility of salt is the mass of salt dissolved in 100 cm cube of water at a specific temperature. Plan an investigation to determine the solubility of magnesium sulfide. They mentioned 50 degrees C's. Your plan include how the solubility of magnesium sulfide gram per 100 cm cube can be fine. You are provided with magnesium sulfide, distilled water, common lab accelerators. To check it, first thing you need to make sure you have 100 cm cube water. So use the rat. After measure 100 cm cube, we put into the beaker. Then next thing they need to fix 50 degrees C. So you need to put them in a water bath and control and make sure it's already reached 50 degrees. Then you need to put magnesium sulfide, but how much you need to put, every batch we put 10 grams and then we stir. If everything dissolves, we continue to put another 10 grams. So every time we put, we will know how many grams we are putting in until it still have some of the magnesium sulfide unable to dissolve, then we stop. Then how we know how many grams haven't dissolved, we filter it out and measure the mass again then you know how many grams is dissolving into this 100 cm cube of water in 50 degrees C. Then we will know what is the solubility, just like that. Then you just write it inwards. So first, we need to measure 100 cm cube of distilled water using burette and pour it into a beaker. So you need to clearly tell me what apparatus you are using. Next step, heat the water in 50 degrees C water path. Because this is the only way that you can keep it in a constant temperature of 50. Then we add the magnesium sulfate. We add every time 10 grams a portion because we don't know how many grams will it dissolve. Every time we stir, if it dissolves, we continue to add in another 10 more grams until no more dissolve. Then we filter out the undissolved solids. Then we will know what is the mass of magnesium sulfate that dissolves because we just used the total mass we added minus the undissolved mass. So in this way, we already know what is the solubility of magnesium sulfate, just like that. So this is the end of the paper review. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment here. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.